In this video, I'm gonna give you a system for building any page or component in Flutterflow. And I wanna do this because when you're looking at a design, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or which widgets from all the possible widgets available to you that you should use. But before that, three preliminary things. First, most of the main architecture, the main scaffolding of your app will be columns, rows, and stacks. So when you're figuring out your layout, these should be your main tools. Good layouts are simple and semantic, and I'll show you how to do that. Second, Flutterflow has tons of other specialty layout widgets like page view for a TikTok style layout or stagger view for a Pinterest style layout. For those specialty kind of layouts, the main layout widgets will be that particular widget. But even in those layouts, this system will be helpful for laying out the components inside that specialty widget. And third, this system is about the main architecture of your app. That is, there are two broad categories of widgets, layout widgets and atomic widgets. Layout widgets are designed to lay out and organize other widgets. That is, layout widgets have children. Atomic widgets are single items like images, icons, or text. They don't have any children. So layout widgets have children, atomic widgets don't. This video is giving you a method for figuring out your layout widgets, because honestly, that's the hardest part. All right, enough preliminaries, let's get into the system. So this system has four steps. So let's grab a sample page and learn it. All right, here's a page from the Chipotle app. And when you first see it, it looks kind of complex and it's hard to know where to start. So the first step of this system is to identify the atomic widgets. Remember, those are those widgets that don't take any children. And you could just circle them like this. That's an atomic widget right there. And this right here and that. And as we move down the page, we got a little image there and we got a bunch of texts and two buttons. And we jump down on another button. And then we got this little guy and that one. Beautiful. So we've highlighted these. Now let's give them the actual widget names. So starting from the top, this will probably be an icon button and then just a normal button and then another icon button. Then we move down over here and we've probably got an image, some more text widgets, then a few button widgets. Then we jump down to that button widget and that little guy down there, we could probably use a container and another text widget. Beautiful. First step is done. Next step is to group close widgets, like close in proximity. They're near each other. And we're gonna group them with one of three widgets, a column, row, or stack. Because remember, this is most of what your layout is made out of. So we've got these first ones right up here, and what would they be? Well, of course, they'd probably be a row, obviously. Next, we've got all of these items down here. And while this may look like a column, whenever you have something that's stacked on top of one another, I want you to pop that stacked thing off here, so that image, and we'll deal with it later. The rest of these can jump into a column. Beautiful. Next, we just got this button down here, and that's not really close to anything at this point, so we can just leave that where it is. And then finally, we've got this container and text, and that is stacked on top of one another, so that will be a column as well. All right, on to our third step, and that's to add a background to any of these groups that we've just made. Now, most of them won't need backgrounds, but we just have to go through and ask. So for the first thing up here, our row, does that need a background? No. It's the same thing as the background of the whole app. Next, this image, does that red little chili image have a background? No, it's just the image itself. Then we've got this column and that does have a background, that white background. Okay, so how do we add a background? That's where containers come in. Containers are used for background styling. And finally, our bottom column does have a background, that white background. So we just need to wrap this column and this column in a container. So let's do that, beautiful. And I've just removed the subchildren, so it's a little clearer. Okay, great. Step three done. Now, the next step is to go back to step two, and we're going to repeat step two and step three all the way until we only have one parent widget. Because you can see as we're grouping widgets here, we're reducing the number of parent widgets. 
Right now, we're down to five, and we want to get down to just one. So let's go back up to step two, where we're grouping close widgets into columns, rows, and stacks. And we look at the first one, which is our row, and that's not really near anything, so we can skip over it. There's nothing in proximity to it. Next, we've got this image and container here, this big guy right over here. And these are definitely in close proximity. So how would we group these? Well, we've got one thing overlapping another. So this is a perfect candidate for a stack. So let's just stack these. And you can see I switched the order here. And that's just so the stacking is right. And I have a little phrase I use to remember the order. And that is, the top is the bottom. So the top of the stack, the container right here, is actually the bottom. And so the image, that little chili pepper, the bottom is the top. Okay, beautiful. Then we go to step three. Do I need to add a background? No, the stack doesn't have a background. And we're not up to one widget yet, so let's keep going. Can we group the widgets anymore? Okay, well, what do we have left here? We've got this, 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 and this. What does that look like? How does it read? Which one of those three widgets can we use? Well, these are just stacked on top of one another, so that's a column. Beautiful. And then our next step, do we need to add a background? Well, yeah, we've got this background image with the chips and guac in it, so let's add that. All right, beautiful. So we've reached one parent widget, but I said there were four steps, so there's one step left, and that is alignment and spacing. That is, all of the spacing between our rows and our stacks and our buttons and our containers and all the alignments of these items hasn't been set, and that's something we have to deal with now. And we're gonna have a whole different video on mastering alignment and spacing, but let me show you how I would do it in this layout. When we see these elements, what do we know for certain? Well, we know that we've got this row up in the top that we want aligned to the start up here, and we've got this menu at the bottom that we want aligned at the bottom, and then we want everything else here pushed down. So really you could think about this in two chunks, this top row and this bottom chunk right here. And we can achieve that by one property on a column, but we would have to wrap all of these items in the bottom with a column. So we do that, and then we just set our main axis alignment on this column to space between. Now, of course, it doesn't look like space between, because we have so many widgets in here, but really we have only two, a row and a column, and this is pushing them to the edges. And of course you would wanna go through all of your items on your stacks and columns and rows and set all the alignment properly, as well as the spacing. And that would include padding, as well as flexible expanded properties and item spacing on columns and rows. But we'll look at that in depth in another video. Okay, so that's the system. Let's try it on another screen. Here's the VRBO app. So our first step is to identify our atomic widgets. So we've got this and this and this and this and all of these. All right, let's give names to these. So we've got an image here and a text field. We've got some text here with an image. Then we've got two more pieces of text and a button, another text, some images. I'll just leave one for now and an icon and text, and I'll just put one instead of five in there for now. Now, this bottom bar here, we would use a nav bar for, so I'm just gonna remove that right now. Okay, beautiful. Next step is to group items in close proximity. So starting from the top, we can wrap these items in a column. Then we've got this card right here. And you may be thinking, there's multiple ways you could lay this out. And that's right. So this could either be a row and then a column or a column and then a row. And while there is multiple ways to build it, normally there's a most efficient way. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we are going to wrap the texts in a column and then we'll add it into a row in a next step. And that's because if we did it the other way, we'd have to add some padding to our bottom text, the same width as that image, which means we just have to set another value. Here, we don't have to. Next, we've got this explore nearby card, and these can stack on top of one another with a column. And then down here, we've just got a header with a row of images, beautiful. Next step is to add a background if we need it. So we would just wanna ask of each of these groups, do you need a different background? No, for this top column. The second column, we do have a border here, but we haven't incorporated that image yet. So for just those two text widgets, we don't need them. For this column, yes, we do need it because we've got this background cabin image. So let's add that in and nothing for everything else. 
Okay, now we move back up to our second step and ask, can we group widgets anymore? And yeah, we got to deal with this card right here with our column and image in it. And how are we going to do that? Well, we've got a column and we've got something next to it. So when you have two things next to one another, we can just wrap that as a row. And down at the bottom, we also have this text header of ideas for another adventure and this row of images that we could wrap in a column. Those are stacked on top of one another. Beautiful. On to step three, do we need a background anywhere? And yes, we do. Our row here has a little border around it, so that's beautiful. And that's our layout. We're down to one widget. Last step, of course, is alignment and spacing. In this case, we could accomplish most of it with item spacing on our top level column, and we're all good. So those are the four steps for mastering most layouts in Flutterflow. If you have any questions about layouts, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to make a video on them, and we'll see you in the next video.